Welcome to me weekly yarns. Right, well, what are we getting doing this week? We're getting the second axle stripped out completely. It's in the bottom of the garden. Um, I've getting all of the bits that we took off with the exception of the brake shoes carriers. Everything else has been wire brushed and cleaned up. I'll give you a look in a minute. Um, we've been really busy this week though. Uh, it's what we call silly season in, in the UK, which is when all the farmers start doing a silage, the hay, um, and then following on from that in a couple of weeks time, it'll be straw. But this week, I'm just trying to, I'm trying to think here what we've been doing. Monday, Tuesday, we're doing bales. Wednesday, because the bale handler, the grab that was on the front of the loader, uh, was, wasn't the best design in the world. And there was a couple of sharp edges at the bottom. And on my second day, we ended up ripping a load of bags open. Uh, and anybody that knows silage knows that the whole point of the silage and bags is that it's to keep the air out, to let the grass ferment, keep the sugars in there for the cattle during the winter. Um, and what's been happening is, if you open the, when you are loading the grabs, either picking them off the floor to stack them or you are loading them onto a trailer, if you release the grab and, and the bag dropped even just that much, it would then put two tears in the bottom of the bag. For some reason as well, the paddles every now and again would just literally rip the bag wide open. So Gemma, my daughter, has been away. She bought um, a different style, a new grab, but different style. You'll, you'll see that I've got some video of it because we had to do a bit of work, obviously. It comes, or it doesn't come, complete with the tractor mount. You have to put the mounts on to fit your tractor. So... Um, as I say, it's a, you'll have you'll see it in the video, but we had to drill four 16 millimeter holes through half inch plate steel, which in itself isn't a, such a bad task. You know what I mean? It's not not desperate. Um, we started off at four mil. I think we went four eight twelve, and then we got stuck. And trying to find. In southeast Northumberland, someone who would sell a 16 millimeter twist bit high speed steel with a turned down shank to fit in a 13 millimeter drill chuck proved impossible. Couldn't find one anywhere. My daughter went to a local tool supplier to the building trade, um, explained what we're trying to do. And they sent home with three masonry bits. Now, I have heard in the past, because they are tungsten tipped, you can drill steel with masonry bits. But I'm under the impression that you need a diamond grinding wheel, which is the green ones. You need a diamond grinding wheel in order to reshape the points. If you look at the point on high speed steel twist bit, it's got a clearly formed cutting edge, like a lathe tool, hasn't it? That cuts into the steel. If you look at the point of a masonry bit, it's a totally different shape because masonry bits are used to pound into brick and grind it away. It doesn't cut it away. So you have to reshape the tungsten bit in order to create a cutting edge, the same as when you put a tungsten insert into a lathe tool holder. Um, we didn't have a green diamond wheel. We couldn't find anybody to sell with 16 millimeter bits. But we had a couple of those cone cutters. See them like Christmas trees, the step cutters? We had a couple of them. Um, we opened the holes up with them to the point where we could get the masonry bits in to take out the the diameters 
And then we stuck a file in and we filed them out, but we got them everything to fit. But that was myself. Gemma was running around all day trying to get parts so I could put it back together. David, my son in law, was there with us all day as well, doing the drilling, doing the filing, trying to get things to fit. Um, we eventually got it done and we were out in the field, clearing the field that night. So. I'll show you a couple of clips of what we've been doing. So as I say, it's been a really busy week. Not a lot to get done with the tractor, but all the bits that we took off the axle have had a wire brushing. So I'll give you a quick whiz around them now, and then we'll show you the what we've been doing out in the fields and with a bale grab. Huh? Back in a moment. Right, so we're getting all the parts washed, um, cleaned. I've given the seal carriers a very light wire brush and a clean um, because I cannot get my big grinder out at the minute with the little chicks being in the garden. I don't want to frighten them with the noise. Dave came out before there to try and water the plants and you could see that one of the little ones getting the cell upset. So Deb packed it in and went back in the house. So what we're doing now is I'm working in the garage and I've given them the lightest of brushes with me bench grinder which has a eight inch disc on it but it's, it's a wire wheel obviously so everything's had a light brush with that and they've come up quite well i'm quite pleased with them actually so we a quick look huh? so we've got our seal carries i say just a very light brush one of them i had to get the scraper to the inside there was a lot mucky of surface rust inside in here i don't know whether this i got the impression that when i come to get the seal out the seal wasn't right up against the front face and i don't think it's been sitting home and i think probably moisture from outside has been getting in and caused a bit of a problem but uh we had to punch one of them out one of them was incredibly tight and that was the one obviously with the surface rust in I think obviously before I put the seals back in, they've, they're coated with diesel now because I've given them a wipe. But they will get um, a bit of a rub with some grease before we put the seals in. The yokes, the yokes has come up well. I'm over the moon with them. I need to still get right into here. There's a little bit. See it in there? I need to get a thin wire brush, put in my drill and get in there. Springs, cotter pins and the seal. I was most impressed with those seals. Came up really nice them. Just needed a bit of a wipe. Get the dirt off them. They're all right. Obviously didn't wash or do anything with the shake proofs because they're going to be replaced. Everything else had a wire brush and a brush up. The two activator pins. These uh, are the big pins out the bottom that the shoes pivot on. So you've got your activators at the top. You've got these pivots at the bottom. Now, two of them, and the same with the pin here. This pin looks like it's been replaced at some point in the past. This one looks an older pin. And same as we have two new pins. These are out of me old axle, these two. And these ones are out of the replacement axle. And I think somebody's replaced them when they've done a set of shoes or whatever in there. The little, the activator for the diff lock, that's the only way on there. Look at that in itself, it's, that's, it's cracking that one. It's the same, the old one that I took out, with a twist in that. The old one was twisted the same. Now, I thought that had getting twisted accidentally. So I straightened it, I put a bit of heat into here, and I straightened it. And obviously, you're not supposed to do that, because if you look on that one, you can actually see where that's been welded in and he treated it to get it to bend. 
the little pole unit, the activator that this comes up against the pedal. Obviously this bit fits on the outside. In this little bag here we have the key, the dead o-ring, the keys in there. All the dowels that came out, the studs that came out, and the two bolts. One, that one there, it looks like I'm going to dress that up with a file. That one there was off the bottom of the diff, and this one came out of the top of the axle. So that's everything that's, that's all, of course, where. Uh, or obligatory box of pipe work. Now that'll all get a really, I'll, what I'll do is I'll pop a pull through, through that lot, clean all that out before it goes back into the axle. There's no point in doing all this cleaning to find out that we put pipe work back in with dirt in it. And it just defeats the whole object, especially with a hydraulic setup. Um, hydraulic really needs to be kept clean. Here we'll have the, <laughs> obligatory hydraulic uh, valve chest with the lowering spool still well stuck. So I was talking to Barclay Williams the other day and what they said was in some extreme circumstances they try and weld or tack something to the end of that spool in there and try and withdraw it by tacking something to the end of it. So it may be that goes in a box. We'll see. Yes, we'll see. We'll see what happens to that. I don't... I think it's moved. I think the spool has moved. I think it's gone further down the hole. I think I've tapped it and it's gone down. Um, now, Victor put a comment in the other day, and I will. I'll uh, I'll do it. I'll I'll stick it into some evapo rust first, and we'll have a go with that. We'll see that. We'll try anything. You know what I mean? We will try anything. Um, I don't like to admit defeat. I do like to try and get things sorted out myself. But there's always a but. There comes a time when you have to say you're at the level of your competence and you have to pass it on to someone with more competence in that area. And that's what Barclay Williams is there for me for. Right, so that's all me bits. Um, all nice and clean, all covered in diesel at the minute because I've wiped them all with a diesel -y rag. Uh, what we're going to do now is we'll bag them all up into clean bags. Um, they will go back to the farm into my little shed across there for storage out the way for the moment. And once we decide whether we're going to do the strip on the axle or whether it's going to go and get shot blasted when it comes back, then all of this will go back into it. And it'll get reassembled, ready for to be put back on the tractor. So a little job today that's on the cards. Gemma's bale grab, the one yesterday that we were using out in the field. And I decided to start and rip all the bales because the, because the feet down there have razor edge, razor sharp edges on them. So that's why they're all taped up and covered in plumber's foam, plumber's insulation. So, because I think it's about 10 quid a bale now for to have silage baled due to the rise in fuel and plastics and everything else, it's getting far too expensive to have the bags getting ripped. And it's not time effective to keep patching the bags up. You can get tape that you put on to patch the bags, but they shouldn't be ripping. You know what I mean? We're not that bad at our job that we can rip the bags wide open. Um, 340 bales were shifted yesterday. So, this is the answer. 
new bill grab, new Foster bill handler. Bigger, bigger, deeper panels for grabbing hold of the bills, but more importantly, no framework in the middle to catch the back of the bills, which is what was happening. Only issue we have, we took these the carriers off this morning, the mounts, we took them off this morning, Gemma's way at the minute, trying to get four more U-bolts for here. A little bit of an issue we have, this is about, what, half inch plate. And the slotted holes in there. Unfortunately, the holes down at the bottom underneath, under here, we haven't got a hole that lines up. Let's have a look here. You can see there, we haven't got a bottom hole that lines up. So, <clears throat> let's see, Gemma's way trying to get four U bolts. We're then going to whip these plates back off again and we're going to drill four holes, clearance holes for the U bolts on the bottom. This will go back together and it will be working today. So that's a little job that we've got done. Right, just had a quick conversation there with Stuart down at Barclay Williams. Um, read the valve chest. Told him what I've been doing. Um, asked him his opinion on a few things. And can we see that? Can we? Can we see? Can we see that? There we go. Right. So where are we here? The the spool for the lowering valve, lowering rate valve. He suggested, if all else has failed so far, try and tack something onto the little tit on the end of the spool in there. And that might be able to pull it out. I did ask him about drilling it and he said it would be difficult to drill because it's hardened. Um, I know Eddie, he had managed to drill. I don't know how he's done that. But I tried to centre punch mine the other day because I thought I'll centre pop it up, put a little drill in and see if we can get things to move. I couldn't get to market with a centre pop and then I thought, ah, this is hard and this, so it's not going to be very good. Um, all the other bits, the... the where, where are we? The bits up here, he's got the ghost filters, he's got the aluminium bush, um, he's got the little aluminium disc in this one here. Uh, he's got a new spool for the lowering valve should it get wrecked on its way out. And if all else fails, then I couldn't... I, he's, well, I had a conversation and he, he did say that I could send it down to him and they would try their best to rescue it. Um, but in his experience, he says the, the little latch valve was the, ones that, the one that tends to kill them the most. He says sometimes they get so stuck in there and you, and you kind of get them out. And he says he is in the past, they've had to scrap chest bodies because of the latch valve just will not come out. So we're going to give it another couple of goes. And as I said, I don't want to scrap this valve chest body for the sake of sending it to somebody with a bit more experience and getting it out. Um, so... I'm going to give it a couple of more goes. He did suggest external circle pliers. So when you squeeze the handles, it pulls the blades together and you pop them over the top and you have a go. I'll try that because I've got some. I'll try that. We'll see what happens. Um, all else fails. It's in a box. Way at the Bartley Williams. We'll get it sorted. But we'll get it put right. There's Johnny on his way back. Get his last load of the night. Uh, no, he's not. Not his last load. He's coming back. We'll have 11 bales, I think, left over. Well. 
that's the last 11 bales off these fields. The rain's gone, it's supposed to start raining the night. Not that far away, nine o'clock. Here he comes, yes, Clarky. Here he comes. Man on a mission. Watch him come steaming down the driveway here. He'll be clapping his hands. Oh, he's got a bit, he's found the light switch. Yes, he's found the light switch. Keeps finding toys in the We've got one bale that's ripped here. We need a bit of tape off them. Stick the bale back together before we uh, load it up. Great trailers, these. Great trailers. Saves all the putting straps on and ropes and all sorts. Absolutely amazing. Bought myself a new bit of kit through the week. I bought um, an iPhone, well, I bought a smartphone gimbal mount, which was a DJ, DJI or M5. Um, I got it because I thought I'm using it now, as you can see, the camera sort of tracking us. That's because it's on this fancy mount, apparently. Um, I bought it because I thought of, oh, I had hoped it was going to be here for the the steam rally. However, I don't think it would have been of any use to the steam rally. Um, I still need to do a lot of learning on how to use it for the best results. I don't think I'm getting the best results out of it at the minute. I need to go in, practice and play with it uh, and, and see what's happening with it. Um, but I'll keep you informed. I'll let you know what's happening. It was expensive. It was £91, which was... Ah, could have bought some nice parts for the tractor with that. But I keep thinking if we can improve the videos, get more of you guys on board, and then we can look at doing the tractor, can't we? But uh, anyway, so I say it's been a busy week for her. Been out and about, done lots of little bits, Everything that came off that axle has been wire brushed. I'm going to put it all away into storage. Then we're going to make this decision as to what's happening with the axle. And then we will have to rebuild it because all the pipework and everything has got to go back into it. Before the axle goes back onto the back of the gearbox. And at some point... We're going to have to make a decision, aren't we, and start and rebuild, start put some bits back together on this tractor so it can create a bit of space because it would be nice to get that engine out of the garage, wouldn't it, and wrapped up somewhere, but I need to find somewhere where I can park it and it'd be safe. Because up at the farm, everything's covered in bird crap at the minute because the farm's just absolutely full of nesting birds. So we'll see. I'm a car boot sale. You know, Saturday morning, I love a good car boot sale, don't you? I'll get a look at this, what I'm getting it here. In here, there are 20 three quarter drive sockets. And you can see they're all, I mean, they didn't look very pretty, but I tell you what, quick wipe and a, with a bit of Scotch Brite and a dose of oil, they look totally different. There is an inch to three quarter reducer and there is a three quarter to three quarter extender that's in there now three quarter drive sockets i've just paid 25 quid i think it was 
for an inch and a half, three quarter drive to do the wheel nuts on Johnny's tractor, the Ford 4000. 20 sockets there, plus a ratchet, plus a reducer and an extender. 30 quid the lot. Not bad, eh? That's why I like going to car boot sales. Anyway, if you like my videos, give us a thumbs up, please. Tell your friends. Just like and subscribe to her. Um, it helps the channel tremendously. And all you people who have subscribed, I think we're up to 227 at the minute. All you people who have subscribed, we do appreciate your time sitting watching the videos. And especially when you do your com, if you like to put your comments in, we we reply to every single person who comments. So don't forget now. See you next time. Thank you very much.